fine. Good. Good, good. How are you too? I'm good. I'm good. Good, good. Mustafa, join or not? Yeah, um, Mustafa, come in the class. Mustafa, the class. <laughs> and Diogo, how are you? Hey there, I'm good. Good. Well, everything alright. Good, good. And Jaime, how are you? Are you there, Jaime? Okay, no worries. Juan, welcome back. Teacher. Good to see you. Good to see you. And let's see, Lucas, how are you? Lucas! No, Lucas. People have been having um, major connection problems lately, so it's a bummer. It's a bummer. <laughs> I'm sorry, Juan. So, let's see. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and um, get started. My goal for today's class is um, to give you some tips and tricks on how to prepare for the speaking portion of the TOEFL and um, also actually get some real practice in. So um, if you are familiar at all with the TOEFL, um, the first and second sections of um, after the to uh, for the speaking portion of the TOEFL, um, they give you um, some. They give you 15 seconds basically to prepare your answer and 45 seconds to speak. So it's not a lot of time. So um, I'm gonna hopefully give you guys some tips on how to um, make that work for you. And um, like I said, and we're also going to actually do some real practice with that. So I will basically give you a question um, that could possibly be on a TOEFL test um, and give you 15 seconds to think about it and 45 seconds to talk about it. But um, before we get into all that, um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Shanae and I am from the United States. I live in California. We had some snow last night as well as this morning, but it's all melted now. Now it's just very cold and very windy. So I don't like the cold and I don't like the wind, so I am looking forward to springtime. Um, and I am in Southern California. I live in a very small town called Yucaipa. Yeah, SoCal. So, but I'm not, I am not a California native. I am from the great state of Arizona. So, um, I'm a what we would say I'm a desert rat. So that is why I prefer sun and heat. Armadillo. I say that again. Armadillo. Armadillo. Yeah, yeah. Kind of. Those are more in Texas. We don't have a lot of those in in Arizona. I'm more like a coyote, so <laughs> I'd say I'm more like a coyote. So, um, but yeah, so um, that's a little bit about me. Um, I have a degree in English. I have a degree in creative writing, and um, I like to talk. So hopefully, with those things, I can help you um, prepare for the TOEFL better. And if you are not preparing for the TOEFL, um, this class is still valuable because it will help assist you with your English speaking skills and um, more importantly the very very valuable skill of thinking on your feet so and that's kind of an idiom that we have thinking on your feet and it just means that when somebody says something to you you're very quickly able to come up with a response so um, that's what we're going to work on today, and I'm glad everybody's here. 
And um, if we can just have everyone introduce themselves. So just say your name and where you're from and tell us a little bit um, about yourself, maybe how long you've been studying English, something like that. Um, Anjo, we'll start with you. Yes, I'm uh, Anjo Tapia from Philippines. Uh, last few days I'm busy here in Colengo, so I'm glad I'm here right now. And this is, I think this is my first time here in your class. I believe so. Nice to meet you. Thank you, ma'am. Nice to meet you. And uh, Diogo? Yes, my name is Diogo. I live in Brazil. I lived in Australia when I was four years old, so I actually speak English my whole life. But I, every day I learn a little bit more, right? And I'm an English teacher myself. And I'm here to learn more English as possible. Very good. That's right. Yeah. I, rem I remember last class I accused you of having a British accent, and it's not. It's Australian. So, uh, welcome. Uh, to yeah, I, I wouldn't know how to classify my accent, actually. I'm not you, sure I, can, I can hear it. I can hear the, the, the down under. The, the down under ah, yeah, in there. Yeah. Yeah, so, I live in a uh, city there called, called Mount Gambia. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. So, um, my, if I try to have like a British accent or Australian accent or an, I, I don't know, they all kind of come out sounding the same. So, I'm, I'm not very good with accents. Yeah, it's, so. it's kind of yeah, but very good. Good to see you again. Good to see you again. Oh, thank you. And, uh, Jaime? Jaime, are you there? Hey, hello. Sorry. Hey, no, that's okay. I don't know. I miss it a lot. Say that again. I don't know if I miss it a lot because I wasn't here. No, that's okay. Um, we just uh, we're we're introducing ourselves. So if you just wanna let us know uh, where you're from, your name, and just something about yourself. Okay. My name is Jaime. I am from Colombia, from Bogota, the main city of the country. Uh, I live here with my, 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 my father and my mother, and I have a little, um, a little um, brother. Sorry. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. A little brother, and right now I am unemployed. <laughs> That means why I am doing this because there is a lot of time that I have. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. uh, wonderful. I don't know. I almost get my my degree, like a university bachelor. Good. Um, it's a system engineer. System engineer. Very good. Very good. Very nice. Well, welcome to class. Nice to meet you, Jaime. Thank you. Thank you. And Juan? Hi, my name is Juan. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, I, I'm studying here business administration and I'm working in my own project now. Uh, so well, I'm here to learn English and it, this is my fourth class with you. Yes, very good. Yes, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And Christoph? Hello, I'm Christoph. I am from Silesia. I'm programmer, web designer, uh, and I am self-taught English, and uh, I want to improve English because I am curious of the world, and English is a good way to uh, get this. <laughs> yes, very good. How's Poland today, Krzysztof? Snowy. Snowy? Yes. Well, good. At least it's not just me. So, <laughs> so very good. And Mauricio. Hello, Shanae. Good afternoon. Nice to see you again. My, uh, hello, everybody. My name is Mauricio Rodriguez. I'm Hymas country folk. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am Colombian. I live in Bogota as well. And mm -hmm. I'm still being a Colingoholic. Uh, but I'm glad to be here again. Wonderful. Very good. 
Very good. How are the cats, Mauricio? Mm, well, uh, they're still having problems. <laughs> Issues? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I've had, I mean, I, like I said, they may they may never get along. So as long as they don't sit there and fight all the time, you're, you're fine. So they'll just peacefully coexist. So. But, but it's funny because because the little kitten, little the mm -hmm. kitten is uh, how do you say is uh, yeah, now is getting used is usually chase usually chases uh, oh. the, the 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 big Porsche uh, Porsche right <laughs> yeah. oh that's so funny mine does that too only my only Alice chases Hallie and Alice is the little one and Hallie's the big one and Alice I don't know she's like. She's stupid. She doesn't realize that Hallie will turn around and rah, go after her. So it's like ugh, constantly. So, but um, yeah, they get brave. Those little kittens, they they get brave all of a sudden and think they're they're bigger than uh, what they are. So, yeah, good. Yes. Um, and Slim. Hello, Shanae. Hello, everybody. I am doing great. For who asked? Um, I hope that uh, for the other, they are doing well too. I am here to reduce uh, and uh, improve my English thanks to Colingo. Wonderful. Very good. Excellent. Uh, Slim was our second place winner yesterday in going on a picnic. I thought he had it. I thought he was going to be the winner. And alas, it was Chris Christoph. You won, didn't you? Yes. Yes. You fall on oil. <laughs> ah, that's Slim right. On oil. oil. <laughs> uh, Slim will never forget oil again. So. Yes. <laughs> Very I can't good. remember. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome, guys. And Sofian. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Sofian. I'm from Algeria. And I'm 17 years old. Very good, guys. All right, so the speaking section of the TOEFL. Um, like I said, with the speaking section, you have 15 seconds to prepare your answer, and you have 45 seconds to speak. Um, my number one tip for this is a good way to practice preparing for this is actually to improve your writing skills um, because you want your answer when you're speaking to be very what we would say very concise or very tight um, and yes I know Mustafa, I'm getting there Mustafa hold on <laughs> and um, you want to be able to express yourself very quickly However, you want to be able to express yourself very clearly. So, think, think of your answer as a mini essay. Okay, think of your answer as a mini essay. So, the parts of the of, of an essay that we have, and if you've taken a lot of Colingo classes, um, especially recently, we've done a lot of different kinds of essay writing. And we have an introduction. So you have the introduction, which comes first. Then you have what's called the body, which comes second. And then, of course, you have what are you always in an essay with? Conclusion. Yes, the conclusion. So you want to think of when you're preparing your speaking answers as a mini essay. Now, obviously, you only have 45 seconds. So you don't want to spend a lot of time on an introduction. You don't want to spend a lot of time on a conclusion. Your introduction and your conclusion ideally will be probably one sentence each. Okay? And then everything else in the middle is going to take up the majority of your time. That being said, when you're preparing your TOEFL answer, your introduction needs to answer the prompt right away. Okay? It needs to answer the prompt right away. So, for example, um, if your prompt is, 
Um, um, I'm just going to use one of the examples I have. What do you think your life will look like after retirement? Okay, let's say that's your question. What do you think your life will look like after retirement? A good introduction needs to answer that question immediately before you start giving supporting details. Uh, um, well, Mustafa, it would depend, it would really depend on what the prompt is. Um, I wouldn't say your name, your company, um, your value, and who you can help in the, in the TOEFL speaking test unless that was the prompt. So, for example, if the question was, what do you think your life will look like after retirement? I don't want to take up any time saying, hi, my name is Shanae. I'm from the United States. I work at Colingo, whatever. That takes up way too much time. Um, they don't care. <laughs> I know that sounds really harsh, but they don't care. They want to be, they want to know if you're able to answer these prompts correctly. So what do you think your life will look like after retirement? Well, a way that I could answer that immediately would be to say something like, I don't ever see myself fully retiring. Okay? Now, that, in essence, that's a thesis statement. You're giving a thesis statement. You are saying that you're, um, that you, and you're answering the question, I don't ever see myself fully retiring. That answers the question right away of what do you imagine your life to be like after retirement. So that would be a good example of an introduction. Then you want to start giving examples. You want to give supporting details, just like as if you were writing an essay. So if I said, I don't ever see myself fully retiring, I could follow that up with, um, I like to keep busy and active. Um, I have trouble, um, and I have trouble relaxing. And I'm totally ripping this off of another website, by the way. But it's a really good example. So um, that's a good. Those are, again, those are. Um, that's a way that you are not only answering the question, but you're supporting your introduction. You're supporting your initial statement of why you don't ever see yourself fully retiring. You guys following me so far? Yes, no, maybe? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So um, you might, and I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time. Um, I'm just actually going to copy and paste this because I don't want to spend the time typing it. So some other things that you could say would be, if I want to spend a few hours reading or listening to music, I usually schedule it into my date book. I find that if I don't force myself to relax from time to time, I always find some sort of project or work to do. Though I may not want to hold a paying job in the medical field when I am older, I will probably volunteer in a third world country rather than retire. I'm lucky that I found work that I'm interested in. Again, this is a really solid, really good response to the question of what do you picture your life to be after you retire. It addresses the fact because if we think about retirement, we always think about relaxing. So this example answer is addressing that problem. Well, how are you going to relax if you don't retire? This person's addressing that potential problem. A, uh, they are also addressing the fact of what they enjoy doing and how they will make that happen. Now we also obviously need um, a conclusion and again you really want to make sure that this is, poss is usually only one sentence long. And a conclusion, the main things to remember about a conclusion is you don't want to leave the person wanting more. You want to tie up the ends. You want to make sure that you've given a complete answer. 
So a good conclusion might be, if I grow tired of my job, I may feel differently when the time comes. That is addressing yet another problem. Well, how do you know that when you're 65 or 70 or 75 that you're not going to want to retire? You know, maybe you're sick of working in the medical field. Maybe I'm sick of teaching. I don't ever see that happening, but you never know. Maybe one of these days I will get sick of teaching and I will want to retire and not want to do it anymore. So, um, but a good example, a good um, conclusion to that would be if, if this happens, then I will do this. It doesn't leave the person that you're speaking to wondering really much of any more because you've tied up those loose ends, so to speak. Um, does that make sense so far? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Shanae, in speaking test, in some parts we should listen to comprehension and talk about, yes, and talk about what we listen or what your opinion or take about their plan. If I miss some parts in comprehension, how should I answer in this case? Okay, um, that's a good question, Mustafa. Um, let me, I have, um, if you're, so you're asking Mustafa if you miss some parts in comprehension, how should you answer? If Because there is a listening exercise for the TOEFL. Like I said, we're going to do some practice with this. <clears throat> if you miss some comprehension parts, I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but you almost have to be a good liar. <laughs> um, and I don't mean, um, you can't, um, I don't mean lie in the sense because if you don't do it right, they're going to know that you have no idea what you're talking about. So, if it were me, this is what... I would do. I would concentrate in my response for the listening portion on the parts that I did understand. I would concentrate on those parts, try to play them up, so to speak, try to make the parts that you did understand the most important. Even if they're not, try to make them the most important if you miss something. The worst mistake that you could possibly make is trying to respond about something that you don't understand because if, and try to fake your way through it. Um, if you try to fake your way through it by doing that, you're going to fail. It, they will know. Native speakers always know when someone is trying to talk about something that they don't really understand. We, we just know. Um, so same thing, if I was sitting here talking in Spanish, you guys would know immediately that my Spanish is horrible. Um, because if I tried to sit here and fake my way through it and have a good conversation in Spanish, you'd be like, okay, well, she missed that verb. She didn't conjugate that verb, right? Um, she is talk. she's saying, um, embarazada when she means that she's embarrassed and not pregnant. I made that mistake once. Um, the question was, I used to take Spanish, and the question was, write about a time, it was a writing test, and it was write about a time when you were embarrassed. Well, we had to write about it in Spanish. I didn't know the verb for embarrassed in Spanish, so I used embarazada. And if you're a Spanish speaker, you know that means pregnant, not embarrassed. So, um, needless to say, I did not get a good grade on that because I tried to fake my way through it. Don't do that. Just concentrate. I should have. What I should have done is picked a different verb that could have expressed embarrassed without actually saying embarrassed. Um, so, don't try to fake your way through that way. Just concentrate on the parts that you do understand for the listening portion. Um, is this matter is you stalling? For the TOEFL, it does matter with stalling because you only have a certain amount of time. You only have a certain amount of time. Um, I'm looking right now at my um, at my resources and for the for the let's see. For the listening portion, it appears that you have 20 seconds to prepare and 
60 seconds to answer. So you have a little bit more time than um, the first and second questions, which are familiar topics. Um, questions three and four are reading, and questions five and six are listening. So um, for those, how many of you in class, are any of you preparing to take the TOEFL who are in class right now? Mm, no. Nope. <laughs> me. Not me. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> You're thinking about it? Okay. All right. Yeah, maybe, so, uh, maybe my English will be good. Maybe. Part of it. Are you familiar with the Cambridge exam as well? Am I familiar? Um, I'm not too familiar. That's not. That's not the. Um, that's not the IELTS, is it? No. I'm not sure, but uh, maybe. I, I actually, you know, I actually haven't been. I was not familiar with the TOEFL or the IELTS until I started working for Colingo because I taught native speakers prior to, um, I taught native speaking English prior to teaching ESL. So um, SAT and stuff like that, I'm a lot more familiar with. I'm still learning a lot about the, the TOEFL and the IELTS. We did, in this class last week, we did reading for the um, IELTS, and from what I can gather, that test is a lot harder than the TOEFL. Um, even for me as a native speaker, some of those questions were like ridiculous. Um, they were really hard. And I mean, I have a degree in English, and um, for the <laughs> reading and the questions that they were asking, even I was like, what? So um, that, that test is, is ridiculous. So it's, it's pretty rough. Well, so, I'm willing to take both, you know. <laughs> Oh, no, you want to take and, both? Okay. Yeah, yeah, North American. If I want to yeah. work with English my whole life, I think it's important. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely, for sure. Um, Mustafa, I also have a problem. The time to prepare uh, is little about, yeah, in speaking tests, no problem in connection. My ideas quickly. When I speak, I say, mm, and, and. All right, so <clears throat> in terms of preparation because you don't have a, a lot of time um, that is a big problem and that's why I said thinking on your feet um, you have to just that just takes practice and that takes being confident in what you're about to say um, regardless like I said you kind of have to be um, good at lying um, and what I mean what I really mean about being good at lying is you just have to project that you know what you're doing, even if you don't. Um, just pretend like you do. And if you pretend like you know what you're doing and all of that, then your answer is going to sound a lot more confident and you're going to get a lot farther. Um, obviously, trying to translate in your head can become problematic. I know that feeling. Um, but you have to just kind of try to get past that. Try to expand your vocabulary. That's something that's really big is trying to expand, uh, expand your vocabulary so that you have an arsenal of words to choose from. That's really important. If you have a lot of words to choose from, you're not going to feel so like, uh, uh, what do I say next? Um, so try to really expand on your vocabulary and practice. I know it may sound ridiculous, but go sit in your bathroom and look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Um, <laughs> it, it really does. It really does work because you can see your facial expressions. Um, you can uh, practice it without trying to. You can try cutting out the ums and the ums and the uh. You can try cutting that out. Um, and when you watch yourself do it over and over and over and over again, it just becomes a lot easier to to make it happen. Um, let's. I read books out loud too. It helps me. That's wonderful. Yes, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, I used to have to give my first teaching job out of college. I taught little kids, and. 
when you teach little kids, if you know anything about little kids, they will be the first ones to be like, do you know what you're talking about? <laughs> um, they are so quick to call you out and that becomes a lot more nerve wracking than teaching adults. Teaching kids is, and I still teach kids on Sundays, and they still will come up with questions like, really teacher? Um, they don't hesitate. So I was really nervous about how I was going to make this happen and do, do well at it. So I did the same thing. I would take my lesson plans, I would take my lesson plans and I would go and I would sit in the bathroom and I would literally like do my whole class in like in the bathroom. And you know, I would start out with my introduction, you know, and granted it was kids, so it was good morning everyone, you know, really excited and upbeat and crazy and um you know, I practice facial expressions, and I practice not saying um every other word. Um, real, there I say, there we go with um. Another thing, you can replace um with so, and now that I've told you that, you'll probably realize that I say so a lot. Um, my mother actually makes fun of me for it all the time. Uh, she'll sit there and she'll go, so, 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 because when I am trying to wait, when I'm trying to think of the that. next thing I want to say, I say so instead of um. So, see, um, so, ah, now it's like I can't not do it. Now I'm turning red. Don't say it, Shanae. Um, but you can kind of, you can find something that works for you to replace what we call, we call it dead air. You can find something to replace that dead air with the so's, the ums, the hums, the uggs, the whatever. So you can you can come up with ways to do that. Um, I have a lot of really good resources that I pulled for all of this to practice. Silence with. is better. It depends. Um, a, a long pause is not a bad thing. It shows. Uh, genuity. It shows that you're genuinely trying to think of what to say next. I would say that one um or one so is okay, but it would be bad if you said something like, um, here, let me try to find something. If you're that making a face of thinking. As far as I know, they don't actually see you when you're taking the TOEFL. It's through a microphone. So you don't really have to worry about that. I'll even do it, um, like when I'm on screen share with you guys, sometimes I'll, I'll sit there and, you know, um, make facial expressions and, you know, sit there with my head in my hands or, or do something that nobody can see if I'm trying to think of what to say next. Um, because it's just, you know, it's it's a moment. It's just, it's your own personal time. What I would say is that if you're talking, okay, so back to the whole retiring thing. If you said something like this, this is, this, this I would not recommend. I don't see myself um, as a person who will ever um, fully retire. I... Um, like to keep busy and I have trouble relaxing so if I don't want to spend or if I want to spend a few hours reading or listening to music um, I usually schedule it into that's bad don't do that um, it would be better to do something like I don't see myself as a person who will ever fully retire I like to keep busy and I have trouble relaxing so, if I want to spend a few hours reading or listening to music, I usually schedule it into my date book. The pauses will feel awkward when you're practicing at first, but it's a lot better than having a lot of the dead air of um, so's after every five words. So, <laughs> I can't get away from that. So, so <laughs> it's just better to do it that way than, than you know, having a lot of so's and ums. Just... Just shut up for a second, basically. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. 
And now I now every time I say so, I'm totally totally noticing it. I can feel my mother laughing at me as we speak. <laughs> would you guys would you guys like to do some practice with this? Yes. Yeah. And see how you do? Sure. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. But do not ask about life. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, there's a lot of different questions that they, I mean, I have a huge list of questions. In fact, let me give this to you guys. I have a question. Shana. Sure. Mm -hmm. Is there a pattern? Is there a pattern in the questions? Yeah, for the first two questions, the, the idea for the first two questions of the TOEFL are familiar topics. Those, I would imagine, would be the easiest for you to answer. Mustafa, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> for me, those would be the easiest for me to answer. I can talk about familiar topics all day long um, without a problem. They seem relatively easy. Um, let's see. Um, like this first question that I have as an example is, Talk about your country's national anthem or flag. Where is it used and where can it be found today? Include details and examples to support your response. You know, that's pretty straightforward. I would say that's pretty simple, pretty easy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody knows about their, I hope, um, knows about their country's national anthem or flag. I realize there's exceptions to every rule. There are plenty of Americans who still have no idea what the national anthem sounds like, which is sad, but um, it does happen. So if, like, let's say this was me, and I'm not going to use it, because I do have an ex a student example of what they said to, to talk about this, but I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to, to talk organically about something that I would say. Um, I'm going to talk about the flag. The flag of the United States has 13 red stripes and 50 white stars on a blue background. You can find the American flag flying in front of banks, government buildings, schools, and a number of people's homes. The flag is used as a national symbol of pride. We salute our flag to show loyalty to our country. And when there's a national tragedy, um, we fly the flag at half staff to show respect. That would be, that would be something that I would say. So it, it addresses every single thing. Um, it says the first question is, uh, where is it used and where can it be found today? Okay, well, well, actually, it says, talk about your country's national anthem or flag. So my very first sentence was, the American flag has 13 red stripes and 50 uh, white stars on a blue background. Okay, I answered right away what my country's flag looks like. Where is it used and where can it be found today? I answered that by, by right away saying it can be found flying in front of banks, in front of government buildings, in front of schools and in front of people's homes. Um, some more details and examples to support the response would include that we salute the flag to show uh, loyalty to the country. Um, we fly the flag at half staff um, when there's been a national tragedy. So those are, and I don't think mine was quite 45 seconds. Um, that would be the other thing. Time yourself, and that's what I wanted to practice today is timing yourself because it's hard to realize what is – sometimes 45 seconds will seem like a lifetime, and sometimes it goes by like that. So um, Can just you pay make attention. some notes? I don't think you have time really to make notes because they – you basically – it's, I, I imagine you take it on a computer screen, and so you press, here's the, like, here, let me, you know what, let me screen share with you real quick, because I actually found this one. May I say something? Should sure, I? of course. Uh-huh. But I think that we can, we can take, we can write keywords down to, you, to, to. 
15, yeah, but that's 15 seconds. I don't know how many words you can write down in 15 seconds. Um, that well, would I mean, be a, I mean, I mean keywords, keywords, keywords to, no, to help I, your main idea. It, yeah. That's fine. If you feel like you have enough time for that, by all means, go for it. I would recommend writing down more of the keywords when you're doing like questions five and six, which is the uh, the listening comprehension. As you're listening, write down those keywords um, if they allow that, which I don't see why they wouldn't. Um, that I'm not sure about. But for example, for these first couple of questions, is this big enough? By the way, can you guys see this? Yes. A little bit. A little, little. A little bit bigger, please. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. So you can see click open question, read the question, click start on the first timer. So basically what happens is you open the question, tell us about a childhood toy that you remember fondly. You have 15 seconds starting from that point to prepare your answer. That's it. I'm not even going to be done talking about this by the time 15 seconds is up probably. So you have 15 seconds to prepare it then your time's up. Then you have 45 seconds to talk about uh, talk about the answer. So it does go by relatively quickly. Um, and that's, that's the only concern I guess I would have with um, writing down keywords. So um, for the first two questions. Now questions three and four are reading comprehension. Questions five and six are listening. Um, those you have a lot more time as you're reading, but even then, um, you have 45 seconds to read. They only give you 45 seconds to read the passage. That's it. 45 seconds to read, 30 seconds to prepare, and 60 seconds to talk about it. So... It's not a lot of time, and I know that's why people get nervous because it's, I mean, it's it's quick. Um, just like when I take the Jeopardy test every year, because one of these days I am going to be on Jeopardy, I have 15 seconds to read a question and answer it. It's insane. It's so nerve-wracking, and I know that's why I don't do well on it um, because all the information that I normally know, like when I play the game on, on TV that I get right, all of that seems to go right outside my brain when I have fi only 15 seconds to do it. Um, Mustafa, should I have a question come in speaking test that I haven't any idea about it and I should talk about it like give your opinion about the museum and um Okay, Mustafa asked if, if a question comes in the speaking test that I haven't any idea about it and I should talk about it like give your opinion about the museum in New York or whatever. How should I answer if I haven't any information or background? What I would do, honestly, I would, like I said, the main thing is you want to start off the question by answering it. Um, answering it right away. So let's say they say give your opinion about the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Okay, I've never been there. So if I got that question, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't have any idea what to say about the Museum of Modern Art in New York City because I've never been there. So I would say something like this. I have never been to the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. I don't know what the art inside the museum looks like, but I can imagine that the art uh, that the museum is full of very famous artists such as painters, sculptors, uh, watercolorists, and I don't know, I, I hate art. Um, so, and I don't, whatever else. No, no, I have a degree on art. 
Oh, you do? <laughs> so you'd be perfect to I answer do. this. Yes. So um, then you, you, and then you know what? After you, after you say, because there's nothing wrong with saying, I, I will say this. They will be more impressed and appreciative of you saying, I don't know anything about this topic. This isn't a Jeopardy test. They're not asking for you to be, you know, all knowing about all the things that are in English. If a question like that happened to come up, be honest about what you don't know. So simply say, I've never been to that museum. I don't know anything about that museum. But I do know about the Louvre in Paris. The Louvre in Paris is home to the greatest masterpiece of all time, the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Isn't that who painted it, right? Is that who painted it, Diogo? Yes, it's right. Okay. Yes, it's right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so... But I'd still rather to go to MoMA. Go, oh, you would, you'd rather go to MoMA? Yeah. <laughs> so, I believe so. Yeah? I've never been to either one. So um, my husband's been to the Louvre. He said it was awesome. I, I, I've been to some Smithsonian's in Washington, D.C., and that's it. So... Um, Start off by being honest that you don't know anything about the topic, but redirect your answer to something that relates to the topic that you do know about. So if you know about some other museum, then talk about that. Um, but be sure that you're very clear that you're addressing the question by saying, at first, I don't, I don't know is a perfectly acceptable answer. It really and truly is. Trust me. Um, what they're looking for for the TOEFL is for the ability for your ability to be able to communicate in English, not how much you know on a subject, especially for questions one and two. If it's a familiar topic, um, if it's a familiar topic that um, you are unfamiliar with, just say that I am unfamiliar with the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, but I am familiar with. The Smithsonian in Washington DC and then talk about that you're still staying on topic and still demonstrating your ability to communicate in English that's what they're looking for there you go Mustafa there's that that link so um, yeah so does that does that answer your question Mustafa about how to address a problem like that should it arise I hope so. Um, let's see. Let me go ahead and give you guys this one too. Um, this is a good website that I pulled, and it's it talks about the different speaking. So questions one and two. You know, in questions one and two, you will be asked to give an opinion or explanation related to a familiar topic. Um, here you see we have what do you think your life will look like after retirement. Um, this website's great because it you can actually listen. I don't know if you guys can hear that through my through mine, but you can actually listen. You can actually listen to what they're saying. Um, you can listen to their cadence. Cadence refers um, to how fast or slow you're talking. So you can listen to that. And then question two, read the question. Take notes. Okay, there's your answer to that, Mauricio. Take notes on the main points of your response. Then respond to the question. Would you prefer to study in a classroom or take an online course? Use reasons and details to, to support your response. So if you're going to do something like that, and how long did that give you? It still only gives you 15 seconds. So let's say your, let's say your answer like for that one is the, the classroom setting. If you were to jot down something, ah, sorry guys. If you were to jot some, if you wanted to take notes on something like that really quick, then you would have to and you'd have to be really quick about writing stuff down but you could simply say um, teacher available in person and you have to kind of know abbreviations and know how to spell um, in person 
um, classmate support, and whatever else. You know, just jot them down really, really quick. Like I said, 15 seconds to jot stuff down is not that long. So, um, I like I, I would still more go for jotting down keywords and stuff for the reading portion. Um, and questions three and four, um, you will read a short passage and then you will hear a short talk on the same uh, subject. Then you will answer a question that relates to both of them. Okay, so that's that's a little bit like it's a little bit more difficult. You can see that they give you 45 seconds to read it. So you have 45 seconds to read a passage of this length. That's not a very long time. That's why improving your reading and writing skills are also really important to passing or getting a good score on the TOEFL. Um, now listen to two students discuss the article. Uh, and then your question is, why does the woman approve of the article? So that's when I would say start jotting stuff down as you're listening. State her opinion and explain the reasons she gives for holding that opinion. Same kind of deal. And then you can also listen to the, this is, is the sample response that the student says. So does anybody have any more? I don't like shorthand modi. I've never really used shorthand modi CEO. I was, um, shorthand's good for things like accounting and things of that nature, um, court reporting. Um, not for English. You can forget really quick what the heck you wrote down. Abbreviations are good and consistent abbreviations. Um, just find out realize what works for you in regards to abbreviations and always use that abbreviation for that word. Always. So, yeah, abbreviations. Shorthand's different. Too. I don't even really know how to use shorthand because I think it's just really strange. Um, here is another link for you guys. Um, of speaking examples. Um, this I like this website because it shares my opinion on constructing your uh, constructing your answer like an essay. It just makes sense to do it that way. And just and this website agrees. So um, yeah, that that's you know introduction, body conclusion, exactly the same thing I said. So. Uh huh. Uh, Tarek is uh, the same as Duffel or not uh, the same? They are listing. Uh, uh, say that again, Slim. Tarek, is it uh, like the Duffel? Is what like the TOEFL? Tarek. Can you type it? Okay. Um. That I don't know. Let me look. It seems similar. It does seem similar. Um, the that though the TOEIC seems to be more geared towards job placement rather than getting into school. TOEFL is more for university and so on like that. The TOEIC, from what I can see, here's a link I found, seems to be more for the workplace. Yeah, it's for work. Yeah. So basically, like, if you're trying to get a job in America, then that would be the test that you would want to go for, is the TOEIC. If you're trying to get into school, then you want to look at the TOEFL or the, I, 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 the IELTS. I know that they have, like, a um, name for it, but I just say IELTS. I, I, I don't know, whatever. 
So it is, is useful for going to Australia. Oh no. Teacher DC. Sorry, guys. Teacher. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm back. I don't know what happened. That's the second time that's happened to me in like two weeks. So, um, yes. So, uh, all of them. Why did you abandon us? <laughs> No, I didn't abandon you. Um, but yeah, so all of the tests are very similar. Um, that's for sure. All of them are very similar. Um, they like even the the toy kit has listening and reading, speaking and writing. They all are the, they all are very similar. It just depends on the material that's in them. So, from what I understand, the TOEFL is the most common test that non-native speakers take. I'm not 100% po positive on that, but in my experience, since I've been with Colingo, that's what my students are definitely by far the most concerned about is the TOEFL. So, but like I said, I don't mind, I mean, I teach academic English every Wednesday, so I don't mind skipping around to, uh, the, the TOEIC or the IELT, I don't, I don't care. Um, they all are very valuable. You know, they all help with your, with your language skills. So they're all good. So absolutely. Thank you, teacher. The IELTS is more easy in speaking. Okay, it's ridiculously hard in, in uh, reading, Mustafa. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I said, I, I taught it last. I taught a practice test from, from it. Um, last week and whew, made me feel like I was back in college. I was like, whoa, this is rough. So, yeah. So, Mustafa, since, uh, do you have any more questions? You're welcome, Juan. You're welcome. So, I know I've done a lot of lecturing this class. Um, if you guys are interested, since we didn't actually get any real practice done, but just talked about a lot of what to expect and whatnot this class, we could do like a part two to this next week and um, actually have you guys, I can actually time you and see how you guys do. Is that something you guys Juan? would be interested in? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Hey, teacher. How are yeah. Um, who was that? Was that Slim? No? Uh, well, I, I would suggest uh, the half part of the class 